Hello and welcome to yet another episode of History Time. Does history have to be always looked at in terms of thousands of years or BC and AD? Cannot a recent occurrence be history? Today we are going to look at an episode that happened just 30 years ago in the city of Chennai. For a brief period, the Kuvam River became radioactive. Let us see how that took place. <laughs> We all know the Kuvam. In Chennai, every river is called the Kuvam, though that is wrong because there are three major rivers, the Kosasthalayar, the Kuvam and the Adayar and we have one canal, the Buckingham Canal. All of them are highly polluted and therefore every one of them is referred to as the Kuvam. The Kuvam River itself is very tiny. It runs only for 72 kilometers and the majority of its course is in Chennai city. If you go outside Chennai, you will find that the Kuvam is very, very clear and very beautiful to look at. In the city, on the other hand, it is a gutter. The credit for that transformation belongs to us people and nobody else. Now, the pollution of the Kuvam is an accepted fact. But what about radioactivity? That is a very dangerous phenomenon. And yet, for around 15 to 20 days, Kuvam was radioactive in 1993. And that came about because oil and natural gas prospecting was going on in the Kaveri Basin in the 1980s. The Oil and Natural Gases Commission was given the responsibility and assisting it was a company known as Halliburton Offshore Services with their offices in Madras City. In order to prospect for oil and natural gas, the company was using radioactive chemicals. These were cesium and americium beryllium both of them highly radioactive. They were brought and kept in small quantities in stainless steel containers within the company premises. They were required and they had been imported by the Atomic Energy Commission of the Government of India. One day, the company ordered the transfer of one of its employees and he was not happy. He decided to teach the company a lesson. He would steal some of these chemicals. What purpose he hoped to achieve by doing this, we have no idea, but he decided that he would do it. And in order to not be caught as a single person, he got hold of two of his colleagues and the three of them stole a small quantity one night in September and took it with them by scooter and left the company premises. In order that they should all not be exposed to the same quantity of radioactivity, they shared the responsibility of carrying the green cloth colored, cloth bound envelope in which they kept the stainless steel containers that had the chemicals. They came by scooter all the way up to the Napier Bridge near where the Kuwam meets the Bay of Bengal and for some reason they flung the envelope into the Kuwam River and they went away. Next day in the morning, the theft was detected by the company and it immediately informed the Tamil Nadu police. The three employees were rounded up and interrogation was conducted and it was found that the envelope was lying at the bottom of the Kuwam near the Napier's Bridge. We always complain about the fact that the Kuwam has got only sludge and no water. But on this occasion, that is what really saved us. If there had been water, the envelope would have floated out into the sea and we would have never been able to find it. But because the river had just sludge in it, the envelope sunk by a good 10 feet and remained at the bottom. Now the big challenge was to identify where the envelope was lying. The Atomic Energy Commission had to come from Delhi Representatives of the Baba Atomic Research Center came from Bombay and they identified the precise location of the envelope. The biggest challenge was to extricate it. It had been lying in the water for a good month and it was very likely that it was completely soaked and therefore it could tear at any point of time. IIT Madras was brought in and rescue measures began. By then, there was no social media in that era but by then, the press in the city had come to know of it and news reports began to come out. There was panic in the city. At the same time, there was curiosity. People began to stand all around the Napier Bridge to watch the rescue operation. The police finally had to barricade the entire area and install floodlights so that rescue work could begin in the night. A giant crane was lowered into the Kuwam and then a cylinder a metal cylinder, a specially constructed metal cylinder was lowered into the water 
in the area where the envelope was lying. The Tamil Nadu fire services was then brought into action and they began to bail out the water that was inside the cylinder. Finally, the envelope was extricated and the city heaved a sigh of relief. The three arrested men were brought before the High Court of Madras and were sentenced to four years rigorous imprisonment. This is a very interesting but a brief episode in the history of the Kuvam and the history of our city. And I had completely forgotten about it. Had it not been for William Satish, who is a regular on this channel, and he sent me a message asking me whether I had forgotten about it. With this, I will conclude this episode and I will be back with you next week with more interesting stories. Bye for now. Thank you.